Hello, and welcome to my talk on tracing back music emotion predictions to sound sources and intuitive perceptual qualities. My name is Shreyan, and this work is done together with my colleagues from the Johannes Kepler University in Linz. Let me begin by an interesting observation that we had when we trained an audio to emotion model. Here you can see a black box model trained using the DEEM dataset. The DEEM dataset contains audio snippets and associated emotion labels. The emotion labels are arousal and balance. When we use this pre-trained model to predict songs from another data set, which is the PM emo data set, we see an interesting pattern. We see that a majority of songs for which the valence is overestimated are hip hop songs. So in this figure, you can see the valence errors are put into quantiles and uh, the y-axis shows the proportion of songs in each quantile, which are hip hop. And on the x-axis is the average valence error for that quantile. You can see that as the average error increases, so does the proportion of hip hop songs in each quantile. Ideally, uh, th there should be around 38% uh, hip hop songs in each quantile, which is the proportion of hip hop songs overall in our test data set. So there is a pattern and a natural question arises is that why this overestimation? Uh, the natural thing to look at is uh, the training data set that we have, which is the DEEM data set. Here you can see that only 2% of the data set are hip hop songs. So it makes sense that the model has not seen enough hip hop songs. So when we test the model on the PM emo data set, it performs poorly on the hip hop songs. A more nuanced question that you can ask is, uh, that you can ask is uh, what musical properties in, in hip hop songs lead to, lead to this specific bias? And for this, we introduce uh, this method of two level explanations, which I will uh, describe in the following slides, uh, which help us to answer this question. And it also helps us verify that if we retrain the model on balanced data, do we see a change that we expect to see? The way we do this is, is uh, going backwards from the prediction. So here we have the emotion predictions and going back, we want some kind of explanatory musical concepts which con contributes to the emotion predictions. Going even further, we want what specific sound sources in the music uh, contributes to these musical concepts. So sound sources, uh, we, by, by sound sources, we mean the instruments or the stems in the, in, in the audio clip. So let us first look at explanatory musical concepts. Music, uh, mu musical concepts can be uh, arranged in a hierarchy where low level features are said to be the building blocks of musical signals such as pitch or onsets or beats. High level features are things such as genre, which are subjective and abstract descriptions. Somewhere in the between, we can say that uh, there are mid-level features, which are perceptual and subjective qualities, but they also make an intuitive musical sense. And in this paper from 2018, Alena Ki et al, they, they proposed seven mid-level features and released an, uh, an accompanying data set. And these features are melodiousness, articulation, rhythmic complexity, stability, dissonance, tonal stability, and minorness. And we use these features as our explanatory features for this work. Now, how do we make our model explainable? So we, we, uh, we do a modification in the final layers of the model. Uh, the model now has two outputs. So one is our usual emotion outputs of arousal and balance. And from the penultimate layer, we make this layer as the mid-level layer. So from the penultimate layer, we take these outputs as well. And these uh, second to last and the last layers are connected via a linear, linear model. Um, this, this complete model is trained by taking the loss uh, from this emotion layer as well as the mid-level layer. And these losses are combined and back propagated together. This is called uh, the joint multitask learning. Now, since this uh, final model is a linear model, 
we can interpret this in terms of the weights of the linear layer. So um, in order to interpret this, uh, we calculate what is known as the effect. So the effect is nothing but the weight uh, corresponding to a mid-level feature going to say one, one of these uh, emotions multiplied by the actual value of a, a particular mid-level feature. So we would say that, for example, the effect of melodiousness on balance is such and such. Uh, now, once uh, now going further, we, we can compute the relative effect for each mid-level feature. So the relative effect would be the absolute value of, uh, of the effect of a mid-level feature uh, divided by the sum of the effects of all of the mid-level features for either valence or arousal. Now, uh, we, we go to our problem. We go to our problem of uh, the overestimation of valence in hip hop songs. Here, I have plotted the relative effects of mid-level features on the valence for hip hop songs for all our songs in the PM emo data set. And here you can see that the effect of rhythmic stability is quite high. And so the relative contribution of rhythmic stability to the valence predictions is quite high. And since we have an overestimation of valence, we can further, uh, further an analyze what, uh, what is causing this peak in rhythmic stability, what musical component is the cause for high rhythmic stability predictions. Here are the second level of explanations come into picture. And for this, we use the audio lime. The audio lime was uh, released in this paper, uh, which, which basically splits the input audio into different, uh, different sound sources and uses a lime approach to, uh, to compute the contribution of each source for a prediction. So how this method works is basically when, when we have a musical input, it uses a source separation alg algorithm to separate into, um, into different uh, stems, which are vocals, drums, bass, and so on. Um, from, these, um, uh, from these separate sources, you can create um, an interpretable representation, which is uh, either you, you, um, you switch on one, uh, one source or you switch off one source. And uh, by switching on and off, you can basically perturb uh, these samples and uh, create um, a sort of a pseudo data set on which you can train a local model. So the idea of Lime is to train a local interpretable model on uh, working on a particular input sample. Uh, when, uh, when, when you train this interpretable local model, you can, uh, you can assign the, uh, the weights to each of these in input stems uh, to the actual prediction that we have. Now, when we use audio line to analyze, to, ex to explain the rhythmic stability of our hip hop songs, we see that most of these songs have uh, vocals as the, um, as the explanatory source for rhythmic stability. Uh, in our case, we, we can reason it and it makes sense because in hip hop songs, vocals are, um, are an important contributing factor to the rhythmic feel of the song. Now, once we have these explanations, we can go ahead and retrain our model with, uh, with the combined data set. So the combined data set is the PMEMO plus DEEM data set, both combined. And um, when we train our model here, we can see that the relative effect of rhythmic st stability has reduced and um, it is more clo closer to the other effects. Um, and also the valence overestimation, uh, the mean valence overestimation, you can see that if the uh, training data is just deemed, then uh, for hip hop songs, it's quite high. And uh, if we train with the combined data set, the overestimation reduces without um, affecting the uh, valence estimations for other genres, which is what is expected. Uh, this is an overall schematic of our of our method. So here is the input. It goes into our model with the mid-level layer, uh, which gives us the emotion predictions. 
And for the first level of explanations, we have the mid-level based explanations. And on the second level, we have the source level based explanation. Thank you for listening to our presentation.